Okay, we are still in lesson 3.4, finding and using slopes. Already talked a little bit about finding slope before and the idea of using the slope with parallel and perpendicular lines. Today we're gonna look at some, or in this video, we're gonna look at some examples. So make sure you've watched the first video already, otherwise this one won't make a whole lot of sense. All right, I am asking you to find the slope between three negative four and negative one, two. So you gotta remember your slope formula. Hopefully you remember slope equals, so M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Remember those twos and ones are down below. They're not up as powers. It's not a y squared. y2 means the second y value. This is an x and a y. This is an x and a y. So this is the second y value. So we're gonna put that one first. So two minus the first y value is negative four over negative one, the second x value is right here, minus three. Two minus negative four, we treat that as a plus, so two plus four is six. Negative one minus three is negative four. A positive divided by a negative is a negative, we usually just put that negative out front, and then we would reduce to three over two, and that is our answer. We do not change that to one and one half, makes it actually harder to do it that way. All right, we don't usually write them as decimals, as like 1.5, because if we get something like 5 sevenths, that's not a decimal that we want to mess around with because it just keeps going forever and forever and just keeps repeating itself after a while. All right, so we just leave them as reduced fractions for our slopes. All right, go ahead and try this one then. Find the slope between 5, negative 12, and 10, negative 7. I want you to go ahead and do that one. Find the slope between 5, negative 12, and negative 10, negative seven. Pause the video so you can get it done. I'm gonna start here in just a second myself, but make sure you pause it, try it first, and see if you can get the right answer. All right, you should have already paused the video and attempted this. Let's take a look and see what your work looks like. So we're doing y2 again, right? y2 is negative seven minus y1 is negative 12 over negative 10 minus five. Treat this as a plus, so negative seven plus 12 is five. Negative 10 minus five is negative 15. We have a positive divided by a negative, so that gives me a negative answer, one third. Negative one third. This is one we would not want to change to a decimal for sure because it's just point three 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 repeating. It's a whole lot easier to graph if we have a one third, if we're using that rise over run idea because I know I would rise one unit when I run three units, but knowing that it's a negative slope, remember it's coming down this way. So I would go over three and down one, over three and down one. The run is three and the rise is one, or you can say down one, that's the negative, and over three to the right, down one and three to the right. All right, last one. Go ahead and try this one real quick. Find the slope between four eight and four one. 4, 8, and 4, 1. Once again, pause the video real quick if you need to, and then I'll come back and do this one for you. All right, so here we go. Y2, 1 minus Y1 is 8, 4 minus 4, so the X2 minus the X1. Here we get negative 7 divided by 0. All right, this is a problem. You cannot divide by 0. Division by 0 is called undefined. So what's our slope? Well, our slope is undefined. Okay, that's one of our possible answers. Remember, slopes can be positive, they can be negative, they can be zero, or they can be undefined. This is an undefined slope. If you graph this, you'd see that. I'm just going to do a real quick graph here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. So four, eight is way up here. Four, one is down here. If I connect them, you'll notice that line is completely vertical. It did not move left or right at all because they're both on the four. Remember, vertical lines have an undefined slope, V-U-X. Vertical lines have an undefined slope, all right? So the slope is undefined, all right? So you should be able to find slope if I give you two points. Next thing you need to be able to do is to work with equations of lines, all right? So I'm gonna give you an example here of what we're gonna do, and then I have four steps that you're gonna kinda of work through, all right? But don't worry about copying them all down, we'll just do them one at a time. All right, so get that first part written down, find the equation of the line that passes through the point negative four, two, and is parallel to y equals one half x minus four. Let me zoom in on that so you 
as you can see it really well, 1 half x minus 4. Okay? All right, so find the equation of the line that passes through the point negative 4, 2 and is parallel to y equals 1 half x minus 4. There's basically four steps you need to do to solve these types of problems. And this first step is you always need to find the slope. Okay? You guys remember slope intercept form y equals mx plus b. m was your slope. Okay? And what do we know about parallel lines? Well, think back to those two postulates we saw in the last lesson. Our postulate said parallel lines have equal slopes. So if that slope is one half, then our new slope is also going to be one half. So m equals one half. Find x and y. Well, that's not too difficult. They're right here. Okay, just don't confuse them. So x equals which one? x equals negative four, and then y equals two. Now, from here, there's two different ways you can do things. I'm gonna show you both, okay? You can do slope-intercept form, and I'll do step three and four doing slope intercept form, or you can use point slope form, and I'll show you how to do point slope form. But let's focus on the slope intercept form. So it says use m, x, and y to find b. Remember y equals mx plus b? So that's what we're, we're focused on. That's what y equals mx plus b. That's what slope intercept form is. All right, so what was my y? Well, my y was two, right? Okay, we have it right. I zoomed the wrong way. Okay, right here I have my y equals two. It came from up here. Okay, so 2 equals m, remember m was 1 half, times x, x was negative 4, plus I don't know b yet. This right here, this minus 4, the original b has absolutely nothing to do with the problem at all. You could put minus 400 here and it wouldn't change anything. Or you could put minus 47 here, it wouldn't change anything. This B has nothing to do with the problem. We have to solve for the new B. All right, positive times a negative is a negative. Okay, so my two, so this is a negative something. Okay, one half times four is two, plus B. Now I add two to both sides. These cancel out and I get four equals B. So I found my B value. That's what it said. Use M, X, and Y to find B. Now the last step is write the equation using M and B. You notice we don't use X and Y anymore. We aren't going to use the negative 4 and the 2. Okay? Y equals M, X plus B. So Y is just Y. M, remember M up here was 1 half. M up here was 1 half. Came from way over here at 1 half. Okay? M is 1 half. So 1 half. X is just X. Now, don't write it like this, okay? Because that makes it look like the x is in the denominator. It's not. It's technically in the numerator, okay? Don't write it like this. Don't write your fraction sideways and then put your x here because, once again, it looks like x is in the denominator. So it needs to be very, very clear that x is in the numerator, okay? Or right next to it. So put it right next to the fraction bar, okay? plus b. Well, what was my b? My b was a positive 4, so I put plus 4, and there's my answer. Now, if it had been b equals negative 5, don't write plus negative 5, just put minus 5, okay? All right, let's go back to step 3, though, and I'll show you how to do it in point slope form. And from here, I don't care which form you use. Try both of them. Try them once or twice. See which one you like better, and then go from there, all right? Point slope form says y minus y1 equals m parenthesis x minus x1. y and x are just x and y. They're not numbers. y1 and x1 are these numbers right up here. Okay, so that's how this works. So we're going to put in m, x, and y. And maybe if you want to write a little note, it's actually x1 and y1. Okay, so y minus, well, what was y1 again? It was this 2 up here equals m, remember that was one half, parentheses, x minus, and it was a minus a negative four. So minus a negative means a positive four. Okay, now all we're gonna do in step four is rewrite this equation. So we're gonna distribute, okay, so let's see what that looks like. y minus two equals one half x plus one half times four is two. And we add two to both sides y equals 1 half x plus 4. You notice I got the same exact answer either way. 1 half x plus 4, 1 half x plus 4. Now some people might say, can I just leave it like this? 
Well, technically you can, but this is a little bit harder to graph. This is what we're used to graphing. I have my y-intercept. I start on the four on the y-axis and I do my slope of one half. This one's a little bit different. You'd have to actually start at the point negative four, two, and then do your slope of one half. You can do it either way, but I want you to be able to get it into this form, okay? Y equals one half X plus four. All right, I'm gonna give you another one of those to try, okay, on your own, and then I'll show you kind of how to do it, all right? So I'll pause the video as you need to. All right, I want you to write the equation, sorry, find the equation of line that passes through six one, and is perpendicular to y equals negative 3x plus 5. Now, this time it's perpendicular, though, so you got to be careful with that. They don't have equal slopes, so think back to what they have. Check your other notes if you need to. All right, but go ahead and pause the video if you need to. Try it. If you feel like you are completely and totally lost, then just uh, copy this down and walk through it with me. But you definitely need to be able to do these on your own. We'll probably try one or two of them right at the beginning of our next class to make sure you understand them okay. All right. Okay, here we go. You should have already paused the video. You should have gone through your four steps. All right, I'm gonna go through them right now. You kind of follow along, make sure you did them correctly. So step one is to find the slope. The old M was negative three. The new M, the new slope, has to be its opposite reciprocal. So opposite means it's gonna be positive. The reciprocal of three, three over one, is going to be one third. Okay, so that's the M that we're going to be using. We're not going to use negative 3 anymore. Okay, step 2, X and Y. So X equals 6 and Y equals 1. Now, I'm going to do it again both, both methods. I'm going to do Y equals MX plus B right now, and then I'll do point slope form in a second. So Y, my 1, equals M times X plus B. 6 times 1 third is 2, so 1 equals 2 plus b, I subtract my 2, cancels, negative 1 equals b. Now I write my answer down. y equals 1 third x, don't write plus negative 1, just write minus 1. So there's my answer, y equals 1 third x minus 1. Okay, I'm going to go back and do steps three and four using point slope form instead. So if you like that method better, and that's the one you tried, you can check that as well. So y minus y1, which is one, equals mx minus x1, which is six. Okay, we distribute. One third x, one third times six is two, but it's a minus here, so minus two. I add one to both sides, these cancel and I get y equals one third x minus one. Same exact answer. All right, two more and we're done. Find the equation of the line that passes through negative four, negative five, and is parallel to the line y equals seven. Now, these are actually really, really, really easy. You do not have to do all four steps because this isn't in y equals mx plus b form. Does it have a slope? Yes, it actually does. Okay, we're not even gonna worry about it though, okay? Remember this. Got this hoy vux idea, remember that? Okay, so this is a y equals line. So it's a horizontal line. It has a zero slope. Now I could go through and say, okay, it has a zero slope, x equals negative four, y equals negative five, go through all the work and see what I come up with. But it would take a long time to do that. Well, not real long, but a lot longer than you need to. Remember, what did we learn about parallel lines? This one's horizontal. Horizontal lines have to be parallel to other horizontal lines, right? So my answer has to be a horizontal line. And horizontal lines are always in the form of y equals a number. So in this case, what does y equal? Is it negative four or is it negative five? This is which one, x or y, and this is which one? Hopefully you remember this is y. So we just write down y equals negative five, and I'm done, that's it. Parallel, I'm gonna use the same exact letter, I'm gonna use y. If it started off as x equals and asked for parallel, then I'm gonna answer with an x equals line, okay? So for parallel, we're doing the same thing. So x equals or y equals, all right? It's very, very simple if you understand that, okay? One more, last one. Find the equation of the line that passes through six negative four and is perpendicular to the line x equals negative three, okay? Perpendicular changes things a little bit. Once again, we're gonna use this hoy vux idea, okay? x equals. It's a vertical line. Vertical lines are perpendicular to what? Are they perpendicular to other vertical lines or are vertical lines perpendicular to horizontal lines? Think about that real quick. 
hopefully you said that vertical lines, x equals is a vertical line, is perpendicular to a horizontal line. Horizontal lines are always y equals a number. Well, what is y equal? y equals negative 4. Done. Now, if this had said y equals a number, then perpendicular to that would have to be x equals a number. So for parallel, back up here, if it starts off as y equals a number, you're going to finish with y equals a number. If it starts off with x equals a number, you're going to finish with x equals a number. If it's perpendicular and you start off with x equals, you're going to end with the opposite thing, y equals. If it starts with y equals, you're going to end up with x equals. And how do you find what x or y equal? You just look at the point. x is the first number, y is the second number. These two examples are supposed to be really, really, really easy. You should hopefully be saying, Mr. Oates, put a bunch of those questions on the quiz or the test. Those are simple. Well, I'll probably put you know one or two of them on there, but you're definitely need to be able to do these harder ones as well, okay? The ones that take a little bit more time. All right, so there you go, using your slopes. Okay, you gotta be able to find the slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and then use that slope as you find equations of lines. We'll see you guys in class.